Hello and welcome to this time of worship. We begin our worship today with our call to worship, which is from Psalm 67, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. God, mark us with grace and blessing. Smile. The whole country will see how you work. All the godless nations see how you save. God, let people thank and enjoy you. Let all people thank and enjoy you. Let all far-flung people become happy and shout for happiness because you judge them fair and square. You tend the far-flung peoples. God, let all people thank and enjoy you. Let all people thank and enjoy you. Earth, display your exuberance. You mark us with blessing, O God, our God. You mark us with blessing, O God. Earth's four corners, honour him. And we reflect those words in the words of our hymn, which is praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Let's sing. Now it's time for our good news slot. And I wonder, when was the last time you celebrated something? Maybe you've had to put a celebration on hold because of the current situation. And now you're wondering when you might be able to schedule a get together with family and friends. You may be finding it difficult to summon up enthusiasm for a particular birthday or event because you're concerned about the health of a loved one, or whether you'll even be able to celebrate in a way you might have done before. So many things have had to be put to one side since all this started. I know that David will look forward to finally celebrating his 60th. As Christians, 
we've missed so much in the church calendar. We've missed Easter and all the services and celebrations that come with it. We've missed meeting together, sharing communion, singing and praying together. But with all that, all those things, all those things we've missed, God has still been there. Not being able to use the building for worship has not devalued our faith. It has not made God any less effective. We have, may have missed the routine and ritual of church, but the good news is that the core of our faith, the root of our belief, has been with us all the way through. And that's Jesus. And as we look forward to opening, albeit with a shortened hymn-free service, we can still spend time with God, share with God, have God minister to us and have our faith grow and bloom. So as we prepare to open our doors again, don't expect God and faith to be better just because we've opened the building. Don't simply focus on what will happen, but look to what is happening and let all people thank and enjoy you. Let all people thank and enjoy you. Amen. We're going to pray now and I'd like to read a prayer from Barbara Glasson who is the president of the Methodist Conference. So let's pray. God of all, help us to remember we are not people of fear, we are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety, we are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Now let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I have now joy to introduce Adam to you, who is going to sing Jesus Be the Centre. <laughs>
Our reading today is taken from Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 to 15, and I'm reading from the Living Bible. Joseph could stand it no longer. Out, all of you, he cried to his attendants, and he was left alone with his brothers. Then he wept aloud. His sobs could be heard throughout the palace, and the news was quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were so stunned with surprise. Come over here, he said. So they came closer. And he again said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't be angry with yourselves that you did this to me, for God did it. He sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. These two years of famine will grow to seven, during which there will be neither ploughing nor harvest. God has sent me here to keep you and your families alive so that you will become a great nation. Yes, it was God who sent me here, not you. And he has made me a counsellor to Pharaoh, a manager of this entire nation, ruler of all the land of Egypt. Hurry. Return to my father and tell him, your son Joseph says, God has made me chief of all the land of Egypt. Come down to me right away. You shall live in the land of Goshen so that you can be near me with all your children, your grandchildren, your flocks and herds. And all that you have, I will take care of you there. For there are still five years of famine ahead of us. Otherwise you will come to utter poverty along with all your household. Tell our father about all my power here in Egypt and how everyone obeys me and bring him to me quickly. Then weeping with joy he embraced Benjamin and Benjamin began weeping too. Amen. You may remember a week or so ago, I was talking about the mustard seed and how our little church got planted there on that corner. Well, it may be that you heard that and accepted it as, well, yes, that sounds like something God would do. And that was it. Or it may be that you thought about it, considered it and thought, well, it's just one of those things. Could have been anywhere, really. Just happened to be on that particular corner. But then we have Joseph. Treated with jealousy and brutality by his brothers. Thrown into a well. Sold to Ishmaelites. Living as a slave. And you might be forgiven for thinking that the God we serve isn't particularly nice to the ones who serve him. But as we read in Genesis 45, God didn't leave Joseph as a slave and he didn't leave him without justice. In fact, it was because of Joseph's hardship and because he didn't turn from God that he ended up in a position of power and influence. And poor Joseph really went through the mill, didn't he? After being sold as a slave, his misery didn't end there. Accused of adultery, thrown into prison, afraid and possibly badly treated and hungry to boot. But even there, even when he was separated from family, his way of life and his liberty, Joseph used what he'd been given by God and became someone that the jailer trusted. He used what God had given him his ability to divine dreams, and use that to help those around him, even when incarcerated. 
it may be that in these times of uncertainty, you feel that you have lost what God gave you. Maybe you feel you have gifts given by God that you haven't used for a while because you've not been able to. It might be that since lockdown you haven't prayed as much or you've prayed more but felt that they haven't really gone anywhere. It might be that your gifting is for being with people, being hospitable, supporting, caring, being someone that somebody can open up to. But you haven't been able to do that because you've been isolating or shielding or because the people and groups you usually spend time with haven't been meeting. It might be that your skill is practical, fixing, mending, sorting. But again, you haven't been able to use this gift because the things you usually fix, mend and sort aren't around because of lockdown. But whatever your gift, and you have one, or more than one, believe me, it hasn't gone to waste. Your gifting is still there. Even if you feel separated from family, even if you feel separated from your pre-lockdown life and feel imprisoned by COVID-19, you are still able to do great things for God and for your community. Just like Joseph, just like our little church on the corner, you are where you are because God wants you there. You may feel that COVID-19 has dealt you a heavy blow. And that may be the case if you've been poorly or you've had family members who have contracted this awful illness. It may be that you've had to miss out on milestones, the birth of a grandchild or a significant occasion like a wedding. For others, it may have just been more than an inconvenience, queuing at the shops, having to wear a mask. But remember, just as it was with Joseph, God has been with you. And will remain with you. God has sent me here to keep you and your families alive so that you will become a great nation. Yes, it was God who sent me here, not you. So if you're feeling a little bit like Joseph, a bit lost, a bit worried about how your life is going, remember that the same God who looked after Joseph looks after you. The same God who rescued Joseph rescues you. And the same God who loved Joseph loves you. So don't be concerned about your gift, whatever that may be. It's not being wasted. It really isn't. It's just waiting to be used. Amen. We're going to sing again. So let's join with we are waiting, we are trusting, we are longing for your blessings, Lord. Let's sing.
now it's time for our prayers of intercession, a time to pray for ourselves and for our world. So let's pray. God of all power and mercy, we thank you for these times of waiting, the times when our plans seem to be put on hold and we have to wait instead for you to intervene. We thank you that in these times we have had to rely on you, wait on you, believe in you, believe that you are taking us through and walking with us. God of all power and mercy, we thank you for all the new ways that you have shown us yourself through unexpected conversations, through unplanned meetings and through new and unconventional exchanges. God of all power and mercy, in these times, you have not stopped. You have not left us to cope on our own. You have been with us, opening up new and different ways to meet with you and with your people. You have shown us new ways to worship, new ways to share and to show others our faith. God of all power and mercy, help us to continue to seek you to speak with you and to meet you in places we do not expect to find you. May we continue to look for new ways to worship, new ways to praise and new ways to serve. And as we begin to look beyond lockdown, may we remember the friendships and alliances we have made on the way. May we continue to reach out to those groups and individuals we have supported like the Food Bank, the Hope Centre and Teardrops and all the other charities and organisations in St Helens who seek to help and support those who are vulnerable. May we also remember those who are still mourning for friends, family and loved ones lost during this time, either to COVID-19 or any other condition. And we hold in our hearts those who are caring for others, physically, practically or both. Help them to know that they are not alone, that you are with them and that you hear their prayers. God of all power and mercy, may we be prepared to move forward with you. As we look to opening up the building for worship, may we be open in our hearts and our minds and what you might be saying to us and your people. And may we be like Joseph ready to acknowledge that it is you who have placed us here in this time and space and may we continue to praise you. Amen. Our final hymn is the roaring one. Go forth and tell, O Church of God awake. Let's sing.
let's say the grace to one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Take care. God bless. Bye bye.